What's up everyone, my name is Platinum Haller, coach of your Delta Gligers. Today I am here to bring you the finals video of Season 7 of the IBL. We're going up against Matt O'Shea and his Montreal Melodics. You can see his team over on the right side of the screen. Matt took over for Wamar, who we faced in Week 5 of this season. Um, I believe he took over after Week 6, so... In the five matches that he played, I believe he went three and two, uh, and ended up finishing third in the Kanto Conference. He took down JB and Dorian on his way to the finals, and he's got a pretty, pretty terrifying team that I had a very difficult time building for. Um, basically, we'll get right into this. So, this is the second time that I've had to face G-Max Gengar this season, but uh, G-Max Gengar was not originally on this roster. Um, the G-Max that Wamar drafted was G-Max Flapple, and naturally I had Pilliswine to check that thing, uh, and I kind of need Pilliswine again this week because my G-Max Gengar matchup is so bad that if I don't lead with this Pilliswine, G-Max Gengar can lead and just rip a fat hole through my team. Like, literally just pick up a kill or two in the first couple turns of the game. And that is not cool. Alright? So, this Pilliswine is basically necessary to prevent Hinton from just ruining my life with Gengar right out of the gate. I feel like the best use, the best way for him to use his Gengar is get it in as early as possible and just punch a giant hole through my team so that uh, stuff like uh, Sandrash Excadrill can clean up later on. So our bulk allows us to live a timid life orb max overgrowth from G-Max Gengar 100% of the time. And because max overgrowth sets grassy terrain, that's why we have to run high horsepower instead of earthquake because the grassy terrain would reduce my Earthquake's damage output and I would not be able to uh, KO the Gengar with a combination of High Horsepower and Ice Shard. Uh, so High Horsepower is not going to kill the Gengar, but it is hopefully going to do enough damage and put it in range for an Ice Shard. Um, if he knows that, I, that Ice Shard is on the way after I bring him down to that low amount of health, then and it, he's either going to go for max guard if he has some sort of status move, or he's just going to switch into something like uh, Vaporeon, or, or anything that can take an Ice Shard pretty well. Um, so in that event, I might just elect to set up my rocks. Again, hazards are <laughs> my hazards suck in this matchup as well because of the Galarian Weezing. Uh, two poison types, my favorite typing. That are that just totally totally screw me over. The best thing that I have to offensively check his G Max Gengar, arguably the best thing that I have, uh, bes besides his Pillow Swine, it's probably going to be the Grim Snarl, which is what I brought against D Ray in Week Four when he had G Max Gengar. Uh, but D Ray didn't have a Galarian Weezing, so Grim Snarl's matchup, as long as that Weezing is around is horrendous. It can't do anything. It's like Weezing, Galarian Weezing is probably one of the best, if not the best checks to Grim Snarl that there, that there is. Um, and Galarian Weezing also does uh, exceptionally well at checking my Araquanid because if he brings Neutralizing Gas, which Brendan did in our uh, Week 10 match, even though he had regular Weezing, not Galarian Weezing, then he negates my water bubble and makes a Raccoonid super, super weak and easy to deal with. So, yeah, just a lot of mods on his team that I don't like that I don't like going up against. Uh, but this Pillow Swine is here, so we don't just get massacred by Gengar. Next up is our G Max Dreldon. Of course, we're going to bring it. It has a Sugar Berry so that we can tank a hit from his Excadrill late in the game. Uh, Dark Pulse, we need Dark Pulse for the G-Max Gengar as well as the Orbeetle. Uh, body Press 
Fighting Stab for the likes of Tyranitar, and if we get some defense boosts, then it's going to be our best thing to hit the Excadrill. We need to be at plus two defense to KO Excadrill with Body Press. Um, I was actually thinking about running Grassy Seed with uh, Solar Beam, um, or I could have done the same thing with like Electric Seed and uh, Thunderbolt. Uh, but eh, because that would have boosted my Body Press damage output. But I think we're gonna stick with the Shikaberry. After all, I don't know if this is the if this is the best thing. I kind of think it would have been really weird and possibly might have been able to work if I brought either the Electric or Grassy Seed. But I chose Solar Beam over Thunderbolt to hit his uh, Vaporeon uh, because I can also use this to. Uh, set grassy terrain and weaken his Excadrill's Earthquake. Uh, so with my Shookaberry and grassy terrain on the field, hopefully uh, his Excadrill won't be doing much damage to me whatsoever. Uh, G-Max Gengar absolutely blows me back. If I take any sort of chip with this Duraldon, I'm pretty sure I get completely destroyed. Um, uh, if, I, if I didn't have any EVs in HP or Special Defense, Timid, Life Orb, G-Max Terror from uh, Gengar actually has a chance to Oko Duraludon in G-Max form. That's how, that's how terrifying this matchup is. So, yeah. Uh, of course we're going to bring our Duraludon, right? It's come to every single game this season, um, and it's been the most fun mod on the team to use, I would say. So next we have Rotom Mo. Uh, to take on the likes of a Vaporeon. The last couple, like Rotom Mo and Drift Blim and the Pill Swine to an extent were kind of causing me some Mon Syndrome issues. Uh, there was, I wanted to find a way to fit a Raccoonid on the team, uh, but I, ju I, I just couldn't do it. I'm not sure if a Raccoonid or Rotom Mo over a Raccoonid is the right choice uh, because a subtoxic. Araquanid. If I um, out, if I were able to run a ton of EVs in speed to outspeed his Vaporeon, would have been really, really nice here. As long as he wasn't uh, neutralizing gas on the Weezing as well. Uh, but in the end, I just decided to use this Rotom mode to be my pivot into the Vaporeon. This move set, I'll explain why I have this move set because I'm very afraid of him just throwing up a wish with the Vaporeon and then hard switching into his Gengar because he should be able to recover basically all of the damage that I do to his Gengar uh, and the Wish will bring him back up to full HP and then he can just G-Max up and start punching holes through me. So I have Thunder Wave. If I catch the Gengar on a switch I can Thunder Wave it, paralyzing it and then Hex is a, I believe Hex if the Gengar is paralyzed has a 90% chance to two-hit KO Gengar in its G-Max form. Um, obviously, if it gets off and it, if it max ooze against us, it's probably going to uh, blow us back. But we also have a light screen so that, like, we can just a light screen is going to help support our team. Uh, if, like, if he managed to get in G-Max Gengar at any point, you know, um, if I can have light screen up when that thing comes in, so that I just don't lose a Pokemon every single time to G-Max Gengar, then I think that's good. Uh, and then we have Leaf Storm so that we can hit both the Vaporeon and get some damage off against his Excadrill as well. So they, uh, this Arcanine here, this Arcanine here is probably the most expendable mod in this matchup. It's pretty much something that I can just switch in to um, Galarian Weezing is the main thing I would be switching this into because he cannot burn me. Uh, and I also resist uh, Strange Steam. He has to really be selective about if he's going to be clicking Sludge Bomb or Strange Steam, or if he even has Sludge Bomb on his moveset, to be honest. Obviously, he's going to have Strange Steam because it hits my Duraludon and it hits my Terrakion super effectively, um, which is the main thing that he would be bringing, like, the main thing that I have that he would be bringing to check my Terrakion is the Galarian Weezing. So obviously, he's going to want to hit it super effectively. Um, heavy duty boots so that we don't take rocks damage or get poisoned by Galarian Weezing's Toxic Spikes. Um, I am not bringing Garboder, so Toxic Spikes I actually think are not too bad in this matchup. 
Um, I mean, actually, well, like, it's a thing that I think he might bring. They're actually not that great in the sense that they don't affect two-thirds of my team that I'm bringing this week, but I can't have them around for my Terrakion, and you'll see why. Um, so we can bring this thing in against the Weezing and just get big damage off against uh, whatever on his team. I'll take damage off against anything, and then Arcanine probably goes down after that. So, uh, you know, Flare Blitz to hit everything as hard as possible. Wild Charge for Vaporeon. There's a very good chance I will play aggressively with this Arcanine and try to predict a Vaporeon switch in, because I don't think the Weezing will be able to uh, to hit Kaomi with any of its attacks. So. Uh, I can go for Wild Charge first if he's expecting a fire move and goes into the Vaporeon, for example. Like, Wild Charge chip on the Weezing plus Flare Blitz the turn after is still sufficient chip for me. Um, yeah, so if I can uh, try to play more aggressively and get myself in a better position with this Arcanine, then I'll definitely do that. Uh, and the main thing, or not the main thing, but I also felt like I needed this Arcanine to be able to hit his uh, Orbeetle. Uh, in case it's some sort of a boosting set. So this would be the default switch into Orbeetle uh, because I would think that he brings Calm Mind over Iron Defense because he needs to have Bug Buzz to hit Grimmsnarl and he should definitely be preparing for Grimmsnarl because you know, I kind of it's one of the things that beats his uh, G or has the potential to beat his G-Max Gengar at least. So yeah. Um, so we need, so we have this thing here to hit that, and if it gets too out of hand, then we can roar it out. We can also roar out a Vaporeon that's trying to wish protect stall us. Um, so like, if he clicks wish and then needs to click protect to get his health back, like if he's trying to wear us down by just uh, having us do recoil damage to ourselves, then we can uh, get that thing out of there, and if something will receive the wish, but at least Vaporeon will still be at a low amount of health. Next is this Drift Bloom. I really felt that Drift Bloom was necessary because I cannot, I can't have his hazards on my field if I'm going to win with the Terrakion that I have as my last Pokemon. Um, so I could have brought Defog on Rotom Mo, but I don't want to have Rotom Mo in against a Weezing that's setting Toxic Spikes or an Orbeetle that is setting Sticky Webs because it doesn't have a good matchup against either one. Uh, Driftblum, on the other hand, does match up well against those Pokemon, um, and eh, a Strange Steam is still going to be doing quite a bit of damage to this uh, to this Driftblum. Uh, but if I get my Citrus Berry popped and Unburden, then I have enough speed to outspeed uh, Excadrill in Sand. If he's only running enough speed to outspeed, uh, like if he's only running speed on Excadrill, sorry, no. This guarantee outspeeds Adam and Excadrill in Sand. Uh, it won't outspeed Jolly, so it's uh, it's up to him how much speed. If he really wants to run enough speed investment to outspeed my Driftblim after an Unburden boost, then good on him. But we'll outspeed Adam in every single time. Uh, and then the move set is very very standard: Defog to get rid of the Sticky Webs and uh, Toxic Spikes. Will O Wisp to burn physical attackers like Tyranitar, which are otherwise like super good switch-ins to this Drift Bloom, uh, and then Strength Sap to try to keep ourselves healthy. This honestly might be... I, I thought about bringing like Charty Berry on this so that I could um, consume my berry while being able to live a Rock Slide from his Exodrill because Exodrill almost is forced to bring Rock Slide so that it can hit a Raquinid. Um, another reason why I don't I wanted a Raquinid on this was so that because it could live hits from Exodrill and, and Liquidation would Oko it uh, in return, but yeah, I'm not sure if I made the correct decision with leaving Araquanid off the team, but alas, these are the mons that we have. And I'm going all out with this Terrakion to try to, to, try to win with this. Uh, endure Salakberry, so we can, uh, and that extra turn that I go for Endure might be enough to uh, stall out Gengar's last turn of G-Max. It might be enough to stall out his last turn of Sand uh, that he has, because Exodrill, if it's in Sand, will still outspeed my Terrakion. Um, and if I can do that, then uh, and, and live the hit and bring myself down to 1 HP, Sandstorm won't chip me down. 
He doesn't have good priority on his team. And if I get to plus two with this thing, then it could be doing a serious amount of damage. The only problem is this is that this does not beat Orbeetle at all. <laughs> uh, I wanted Zen Headbutt on here for the Galarian Weezing, for the uh, G-Max Gengar. Stone Edge is just barely less powerful than Zen Headbutt against those two mons, um, but it's also less accurate. So I just decided to go with Zen Headbutt instead. It's not a guarantee that he even brings Orbeetle to this game, and if he does, then I'm just going to have to try to deal with it with the other members on my team before I can get this uh, Terrakion set up. So, yeah, that's going to be the team. Uh, this is going to be a pretty rough matchup, I think, uh, but we're going to give it the best we got and hopefully deliver an entertaining finals match for you guys. So, we'll see you right back with the battle. Okay, we're here for the battle. And, oh, I never actually... <laughs> Um, confirmed with him which number I'd be taking. I'd like to do one five one because I want the I want the uh, playoff battles to be in the the Winden Stadium. Um, that's the most appropriate backdrop for a playoff match, right? Because all of the the um, all of the big matches in the Gala region that's where they're played, right? Against in the the Champions Cup, and this is. The battle who will determine the champion of the IBL so um, yeah it's, it's just a more appropriate setting so that's why I want to be 151 usually I wouldn't care uh, because if I chose 151 all the time then all of my matches would be in the same stadium with the same backdrop and that might get a little stale on the channel after a while okay so that's what we're gonna go with And I'm gonna make sure I get his team written down. I'm expecting five Mons for sure to come on his side. The five Mons that I think will come are Exodrill, Tyranitar, GMS Gengar, Vaporeon, and Galarian Weezing. And then the six Mon can really be anything that's not named Greedent. Uh, that's the one thing that I don't think is gonna come. I don't think, I even think he's brought it. Uh, yeah, so the top five and Girder. Nah, no surprise there. Oh shit, I totally, totally did not think about Garter and Mac Punch beating my Terrakion. I feel like such an idiot now for bringing that set. I should have expected Girder as the last Mon for that exact reason. Well, we're still going to be leading with Pillow Swine. Um, I don't know how I beat the Girder at all, honestly. Kind of need to just punch a hole through it with the Raladon. It's the same team that Lamar brought against me, except he didn't have Vaporeon. And he didn't have uh, G-Max Gengar. So he brought Espeon, which he had on the roster before. And what was the other Pokemon that he had? Um, oh, Munchlax. He brought Munchlax against me. Yeah, I remember that now. Good luck and have fun to Matt. I just hope that this is a match. I see the match would have been in Winden Stadium. No, regardless, even if I had chosen 152. Looking at Matt's lead card. I just hope this isn't a complete and utter body bag. Purple Pedro, he leaves with Victorian. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna go into my Rotom right away and get my light screen up, I think. He either goes for a Scald or just Baton passes out immediately. If he thinks I'm a lead rocker, then he'll just Scald. Uh, 
No, you know what? I'm gonna predict. I, I, I'm gonna hope that he plays aggressive and baton passes. Or just clicks anything other than Scald. Maybe he'll click Ice Beam. Toxic. Miss Toxic. I know he's gonna be really upset about that because he is so unlucky in these types of games. So we got rocks up now. He has the glaring wheezing to defog. Oh, he didn't like wasted no time at all with that move. Uh, I kind of want to get toxic off on him too. So I think he'll click it again. Nope. Ice beam. Okay. So that little bit of chip. That little bit of chip is going to make uh, G-Max Gengar's Max Overgrowth a roll to knock me out. Now I'm going to go into Rotom. Toxic, Ice Beam. If he doesn't, if he's not Wish Protect, if he's Wish Protect, then he doesn't have uh, Skull. Heal Bell. Okay. So this is actually... <laughs> his toxic miss on his part was really bad. Um, so he doesn't have... He hasn't done... He had, is he going to have Scald? He might not even be Wish Protect. I am going to... Not click Thunder Wave because he has... Um, and click least on here because I don't th I think he just wants any damage off that he can get oh my god that's so bulky that's so bulky good lord not gonna chew it KO me I'm gonna throw up a should I throw up my light screen now? Or should I go into my Arcanine expecting another Ice Beam? And then I can click. Oh. Probably made a misplay by not just clicking light screen right away. I'm taking way too much time. Light screen. Oh, I should have gone for the light screen on the first turn. Oh, okay, he switches out. Interesting play. Underminer is Excadrill. I think he wants to click SD. I can't stay in. I have to go into my... I have to go into my Drift Blim. He doesn't have Orbital. So, getting rid of webs isn't... <sighs> All I know is that I can't stay in. And I don't know if plus two... I don't think I saw Mold Breaker. Okay, so he went for Exorcer, that's really good because we quad resist that. Um, and I can... I think I should just click Shadow Ball here. Because he doesn't want to get burned. He could also go out into his T-Tar. But... Unless his T-Tar is lum, he doesn't want to switch that in. So I kind of just want to... Or I could... Oh, he might... Mm, I think he's going to switch out into something. And I don't think... If his Vaporeon is so bulky... That... I don't think that um, two Shadow Balls would kill. So if he goes back into that thing, he did go into Victorion. So we get in our Arcanine to KO this thing with a Wild Charge. Uh, mm, two Shadow Balls might have been able to kill, but just the how well it took that Leaf Storm, I just I really don't know.
So we should knock this thing out. You put a dent into my Rotom with this. He could also, if he wants to keep this around. I don't know why he would want to keep this around. Wakanberry. We should still kill this. Alright, there it goes. Um, so, G-Max Gengar, if it's Life Orb, might be able to kill us with uh, G-Max Terror from this range. I don't think he goes into that, though. Um, I feel like Exodrill would... He goes into T-Tar. Wow! Okay, I'm clicking close combat. I think he's going to be Choppleberry, but I'm just clicking close combat anyway. If he's Choppleberry, then he's not Smooth Rock, which is really good. Hard switching. Oh, did he? Oh, okay. He hard switched. He doubled him wheezing instead, which I'm fine with because this is what I want damage off against. What was he predicting? What was he, he was predicting maybe my Terrakion to come in there? This is the thing that I want damage off against. Um, but as long as the freaking girder is still around, I'm not switching out. I'm clicking Flare Blitz. Especially if he wants to click Defog, this might get to it KO'd by Flare Blitz plus Sand Chip. And if he doesn't have... Well, Flare Blitz Recoil, there's a chance that it could knock me in range to die from a Sludge Bomb because of the minus death that I just took. Hmm, I don't know if that's going to be enough to kill with the second one. But he does just Defog. So we should be... Okay, and he gets a little of my light screen too. Another Flare Blitz might kill this thing. He doesn't have anything to switch in. So I should be tracking Sand turns. He switched in T-Tar. So this, that's three turns of Sand gone. This will be the fourth. Uh, just It's just easier for me to... I know that I can check the stats in the game to look at sand turns. Can we can we knock this thing out? Yes! That's really big. So down goes the wheezing. Uh, if we get rocks back up... If we get rock back, rocks back up, then they're here to stay. Unless... Well, he could have defog girder as well. The girder is... Okay, here is the Excadrill. Do we want to save our Arcanine? I think we do, so that we can switch it in against the Girder, get a Intimidate drop, and then get hopefully get Flare Blitz damage off against them. So I am going to go back into... Um, I'm going to go back into my Drift Blim. If he clicks Earthquake, he won't do anything to me. I really don't think he clicks Swords Dance. I really don't think he does, because I've shown that I'm just staying in. Iron... Oh, he went for Iron Hand. That's a good play. Is that going to pop my... That is going to pop my Citrus Berry. So I'll get my Unburdened Boost. We'll find out how fast this thing is. Um, so that was the... Flare Blitz, Flare Blitz, close combat. This is the fifth turn of Sand. So we don't know if he's either click Will Wisp here. I think I click Will Wisp every single time. Do I outspeed you? Are you switching out so we'll, we'll, I guess we'll never know. It is the Girder. So we might have just given this thing Guts. But that's... I think that's okay with me. I don't think... If this thing is Guts... Uh, also, we'll find out if the Sandstorm goes away here. It does not, so he is Smooth Rock Tyranitar. 
Uh, I'm gonna stall out. I think this might play to stall out those turns. If he if he's got a rock move, he might be able to knock me out. And a rock move would also KO Arcanine. So I want to make sure that I at least live one more turn. I need to get rid of this girder. He just has knock off. And that is definitely guts. And I think because he's at minus attack now I can live another knock off. So we will click Shadow Ball here for some damage. The fact that he can't Drain Punch and Oh, he switched out! He- WHAT?! He went into Gengar?! Why would you do that?! Why would you do that?! I oh my god! He didn't get Cursed Body, I can attack him again and knock out his Gengar! What was he thinking I was going to do? I don't understand that for the life of me. I, out, I, I outspeed the Gengar because of my unburden. I can't believe the way this match is going right now. I am genuinely shocked. Uh, the turn one Toxic Miss really sucks I know like that's just dumb and I know that that uh, annoys Matt a lot just because it happens to him frequently he didn't get cursed bodied for the second time in a row so I can still click shadow ball against something um, I don't fear Dragon Dance Tyranitar anymore because or maybe... Is it possible that he just sacked the Gengar to get Tyranitar in again so he can sit Sand? If I can withstand the Onslaught, if I can somehow beat the Excadrill... I have a plenty of time left. I need to think through these moves. Do I Will-O-Wisp or do I Strength Zap? I'm going to Strength Zap. Just in case I can live a hit from him, I would be stalling out turns of Sand. And we know he's not Lumberry, so if I get him burned, then that's great. I don't think I need him burned. I think I'd rather just stall out turns of Sand. So there's Crunch. Can we take one? At, oh, easily. We can take one easily. Oh, it gets a def Ooh, defense drop sucks. Defense drop sucks. But if we get the burn, if we get the burn, then we can live another hit, I think. And then just strength zap until we die, pretty much. All right, we do hit it. I feel bad because I've hit my will o wisps and he didn't hit that toxic. Goes for rocks. We have defog. We have defog. I don't think rocks hurt us. Anyway, I don't think there's a reason to defog. So I'm just going to strength sap again. We've seen X Scissor, Iron Head. He has to have Earthquake. Do we save this Girder or this uh, Ice Beam? What the heck? He has to have Rock Slide. He has to have Rock Slide uh, for the. Okay, so there's no point in uh, clicking Strength Sap again. I don't think there's any point in saving this uh, this Drift Bloom. It's going to take rocks when it comes back in, and I well, I could just uh, defog, actually. I could also save this as sack, as a sack to Girder so that he doesn't get Drain Punch recovery. 
I think that's probably the better play because I don't think that I need my um, I don't think that I need my Rotom Mo right now. I don't think I need Rotom. So I'm going to save this as a sack to the Girder. He goes for Ice Beam again. Then we, I would think we live. I don't know. We do live and the Sandstorm is not going to kill us. I don't think we should live the Sandstorm. Um, and now Sandstorm will kill us on the next turn. Our play here is to Leaf Storm 100% of the time. We still have enough time left. So he's going to switch this out. Okay, so he's going to try to get more turns of sand. But he's going into the Girder. We'll get Leaf Storm damage off against Girder, which is good. Oh my god, that's a crit. Oh, is that not even a crit? How did that kill you? Are you, you that that the only reason the only way that doesn't kill you is if you're not a violet. So my drift limit at this point is just a sack. I think it's just time to go into Duraludon. Yep, we go to Raladon. I think he has to go into his uh, Excadrill. And we're going to G-Max up and click Max Overgrowth to reduce the power of his Earthquake. I think we just... I think we managed to pull off back-to-back -back championships. We should have this. And it's possible, it's possible that Duraludon will clean up this game just like it did against Wamar. There's Earthquake, we have our Shuckaberry. I actually considered running Air Balloon as well, uh, but Ooh, it does big damage. That's a crit, that's why. So we should still be able to live the second Earthquake, uh, as long as he doesn't get another crit, which I kind of wouldn't be mad at if he did get another crit because of all the acts that's gone against him. So I think my best play is to go for Max Overgrowth again. It should be doing the most damage. It's going to be Grassy Terrain boosted this time, and we'll definitely KO. So yeah, because grass, Grassy Terrain reduces the power of Earthquake, so we live, and Max Overgrowth is going to KO, and we have, and we can, I don't actually know which is going to be the strongest move to hit his T-Char, if it's going to be Max, well, Max Steel Spike, I think, but I mean, it's Grassy Terrain boosted, so I don't really think it matters. T-Char can't win this game on its own at this point. I'm shocked. I don't. Uh, I need to hear what he was thinking when he went into the G Max Gengar. He just sacked the biggest threat to my team. Um, move info 140 versus 130. Steel Spike gets stabbed. I don't really think it matters. We'll just go for Overgrowth. Is this going to be enough to kill? I think Sandstorm is still active, so it doesn't quite kill. Uh, and I think Ice Beam does kill us. Oh no, it doesn't even kill us! Oh boy. Oh boy. And we're going to wrap this match up just like we wrapped up the match against Lamar with Duraludon KOing Tyranitar with Body Press. GG to Matt. You know what? This turned out to not be the best quality game that I was hoping for. I'm really, really, really shocked at how this game went.
Like, I did not want to win the finals 5-0, you know? That didn't really feel like it should have been a 5-0. Yeah, like, the Gengar play just, I don't get it. I don't get it. Any time that thing could have came in and just clicked buttons and gotten like two or three kills without even trying. And he just switched it in, sacked it, never, and like he got absolutely no luck in that game at all, except for like the crit against my Duraludon that didn't even matter. Um, I feel, I feel bad just because Matt has been very, I feel like he's been hacked out of very important games very frequently this generation. Frequently, is that a word? Frequently in this generation? And that's not how I wanted this uh, match to go. I wanted it to be a very a close and more entertaining game than it turned out to be. I wanted it to be just as entertaining, if not more entertaining, than the previous two games that I had in playoffs. The quarterfinals match that wasn't even a real match against Incog. That match was awesome, so entertaining, and then the semis against Ruppy was, like, arguably topped that. And now, I don't know, I just feel, like, obviously I'm happy that I won, but I'm not nearly as psyched up after this win as I was after the semifinals win, if that makes any sense, so yeah. But nonetheless, the Delta Gliders have followed up the footsteps and the legacy of the Coquitlam Red Gyarados. Of the, the Coquitlam Red Gyarados were IBL Season 6 champions, and now the Delta Gliders have a Wi-Fi championship of their own. So that is back-to-back -back IBL titles for us. Three titles in total, uh, if you count the NCL Blitzel Division uh, title that uh, we won on uh, Showdown not too long ago. So yeah, I don't really know what else to say. Uh, I wish I had more comments on the game. Um, but yeah, like I was just so afraid of the G-Max Gengar and he just, he didn't play it very well at all, I think. I don't think he supported it very well. Um, Driftblim put in way, way more work than I thought it would put in. Holy crap. It came in against the uh, Excadrill and just stayed in uh, and put in tons of work. Like, burned his girder that was guts, but like, and as soon as I saw girder, I was like, how the hell am I going to win this game with the girder in the back to always beat my Wincon uh, Terrakion set? And I really feel like that was the only way in this matchup that I could get around. Um, the the G Max Gengar and then the combination of his like uh, of his sand and stuff because like he could just bring in Gengar at any point and revenge kill any single one of my mons like whether it was it had used its G Max yet or not so I needed that speed boost to be able to outspeed it um, and I totally just blanked in prep on the fact that Girder could come with priority Mach Punch for Drakion which I was afraid of it. I remember being afraid of it in my initial uh, build against Wamar, but somehow in this build it just totally escaped my mind. Um, but turns out Terrakion never even needed to hit the field for us, uh, and neither did, uh, actually did every single else other Pokemon on my team hit the field? Yeah, I think it did. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Extremely fun season. Not the most fun conclusion to the season. That's how I'm feeling right now. So, yeah. Uh, I'll, usual thank yous. Uh, thank you to the front office members that helped me with um, builds over the course of the season. There are seven of you. Uh, I'll try to... Panda, Eco... Uh, oh gosh, I... Um, I don't even know why I needed to do that. I was like, I reacted to the screen going dark, but you're not even going to see the Wi-Fi screen right now. <laughs> you're gonna see the end screen. 
Um, yeah, as I was saying, Panda, Eco, Sven, Gage, all from the LET community, been a massive, massive help in the front office, as well as Ruppy's in there, although technically he doesn't have the front office role, but he's still in there. Um, Aquarius and uh, OG Albina as well. Uh, for every, he, uh, he was in there for every game except for the game against him. Uh, thank you to the IBL Adam crew, especially Brendan for uh, running a, a tight ship this season. Um, and thank you for inviting me back for the to, to coach in season eight, which will start up in a couple months or so. Uh, and also, thank you to thank you for inviting me to be a part of the council. I'm gonna be uh, I'm actually gonna be an admin in the IBL next year, and I'm gonna be one of those uh, people that uh, people would be thanking at the end of their season videos, which is which is kind of cool. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, having the opportunity to help the uh, IBL continue to operate and just have um, uh, an enhanced role in a league that I think is uh, is really cool. And I'm glad that I'm that I'll be sticking around. So yeah. If you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed this season of the IBL, please leave a comment down below, leave a like on this video, and subscribe to the channel to keep up with all of our draft league content. Uh, we have more Wi-Fi Draft League in the form of BBR that's uh, that's ongoing. Week 1 just went up yesterday, so go support us there and keep an eye out for uh, the start of the NCL Season 7 uh, showdown content that we got coming as well. Until next time guys, see you later. <laughs>